Hi, this is Ennis from Never Stop Tracking. Today we are talking about why you should not be working with one broker, uh, maybe even a couple of them. Why do you want to uh, have your eggs in different baskets? Okay, so don't put all your eggs in one basket. And this is a great example uh, ab about uh, doing a business like that. I know um, a few companies that uh, went out of business and there are a few of them that you uh, might know, like some larger companies that have uh, contracts, especially with the auto industry. And um, uh, one of these companies goes down and then you can shut down your trucking company, even if you have uh, uh, like 50 or 100 trucks and you're done okay if they go out of business so you don't want to work with one shipper only you don't want to work with uh, one or two brokers only there are thousands and thousands of brokers and, and shippers if you're working directly with them and you want to uh, work um, with uh, as many of them as you can i just spoke to an owner operator actually yesterday and he's doing power only loads and this company that uh, you know and he's working directly with the shipper and now they're saying they don't have any freight and now he has to find something else okay uh, and then i also uh, spoke to someone that has a hot shot flatbed and the same thing you know now he has to rely on us and and call me and uh, our dispatching company and have us help them okay so same thing uh, if you're a trucking company and uh, you're relying on one broker, there are a few things that can happen. Uh, so I'll, na I'll name a few of them, okay? And why you're risking your business. Uh, first thing, let's say you have a factoring company. And your f factoring companies usually have limits, uh, especially for smaller brokers, even with larger brokers. They have uh, monthly limits or they have uh, a certain amount of invoices they will buy uh, from one broker like $10,000, $50,000, and then they'll stop buying those invoices from you until uh, the broker goes, uh, you know, pays some of those invoices uh, to the factoring company, and then um, uh, their balance, you know, goes down, and then you still have like, like let's say they pay $10,000, and they can do only 50, they pay 10, now you can do another $10,000 with them so factoring companies have limits okay um, another thing is um, if that broker goes out of business uh, then you're done um, the broker will probably owe you money uh, you're going to have to um, you know make a, a post to their bond uh, but guess what there are hundreds of other maybe even thousands of uh, trucking companies doing the same thing and uh, uh, their bond carrier will not pay you 100%, you should be lucky if you only get a, a very small portion of that money. And then factoring companies, you know, it depends if they're doing a recourse or non-recourse. Uh, some factoring companies have a policy that they will pay you if the broker goes bankrupt, okay? Uh, but some of them, uh, most of them will not pay you, it, no matter if it's recourse or non-recourse, most of them will not pay you if the broker uh, just decides not to pay you you know for like whatever reason so you have to look into your contract about that and talk to your agent uh, with factoring company if they're going to pay if the company goes out of the business uh, or if uh, the company goes bankrupt or if there is another reason behind uh, them not paying you for the load okay so uh let's say you're doing you're doing work with one broker they go out of business and then you're, you're not going to get paid most likely maybe you'll get paid some of the money but most likely you're not going to get paid, okay? Uh, another scenario, and I had that happen before, uh, I was fortunate uh, that that broker only owed me for like uh, two or three lots. It was like um, uh, between two and $3,000. There was a claim on the load, and it was obvious that it was a false claim. It, you know, the driver, I spoke to the driver, I looked at the pictures, I spoke to the shipping company, even the insurance, uh, declined their claim because it, they said that there is no uh, reason for them to do that, to put a claim on the load. Uh, really short, I don't want to bore you with that claim, but really short, uh, we were transporting glass. A couple of sheets of glass were damaged and uh, 
that truck had uh, probably, uh, I would say around 40 to 50 uh, sheets of glass. A uh, couple of them were damaged, but they wanted to put a claim on the whole load. And at the end, it wasn't our fault that they were damaged because they put uh, these, uh, this glass on uh, metal racks themselves and they band them together. They band the, the secure the glass to the uh, rack. They bring in the racks into the trailer and they use two by fours and uh, nail down the two by fours uh, so the uh, racks cannot move. So it was 100% not our fault, yet they wanted to do a claim. But what's worse, they did a claim on the whole load. So they wanted to double dip. They, they kept the load uh, and they also wanted uh, the insurance to pay them for the value of the load. Of course, the insurance said no, but guess what? The broker owed me for uh, two or three loads that were done previously, the same loads, and they never paid. And, you know, I couldn't do anything about it. Okay, maybe I could have taken him to court. They are out of New York. I'm from Michigan. I have to deal with that. Uh, and I also, I was speaking about this uh, earlier and someone said, well, you know, you should go to court. No, I, you know, if this was like twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, then yes. But for two, three thousand $3,000, you know, pay the lawyer, go over there. Uh, I, I don't want to mess with it. If these companies go out of business, then uh, like I said, uh, you're done. If there's a claim, you're also done. Um, if you rely on one broker for uh, the capacity you know for your for the load availability and you and, and this is this is what was done with one of these large companies um i can't remember like i think falconer uh, that's what their name was uh, they relied on on um one uh, broker one one shipper uh i think it was auto parts and uh, they had a lot of trucks a lot of drivers and dispatchers and then when they lost that account they were just you know, they froze. They they have no contacts, you know, with brokers. They have no other shippers. Uh, they don't have a potential to work with uh, um, uh, other uh, brokers because they don't know how to do it. They don't have any relationships. Uh, you know, it's different if you have five trucks. Okay, well, I'm just going to go on the load board and start looking for trucks. But if you have 100 trucks, you know, how are you going to cover then them all of a sudden you, you you have no connections nothing okay so you know you it's going to be very hard for you to uh, switch from that concept you know maybe you have trailers that um like you know if you're doing loads for gm you have specific trailers specific equipment specific uh trucks you know maybe uh, day caps maybe drivers who only want to do that or drivers who want to be home um every night or whatever uh, now you, you have to change everything uh, to a different concept overnight. It's going to be hard or it's not going to happen. So these are main reasons why uh, you want to work with uh, more shippers, more customers, more brokers, as many as you can, uh, not just rely on one of them. Thanks for watching. My name is Ennis. Never stop trucking. Uh, I'll see you around.